What's up? It is Tuesday in the shop, and yeah, RIP to Monday. You got no footage. Just because I got back from Nashville, we didn't get back till late. Went to that toy store and everything, but yesterday, Monday, me and my wife both just felt like hell. I didn't wake up till afternoon. I was exhausted. I'm not sure what was going on. She thinks she was sick. I didn't feel sick. I was just too tired to actually do anything, which sucked because I really wanted to do some stuff here at the shop that didn't get done. But we're back at it. We got a boat in here today. This is called the Honey Bee. That's what the boat's name, so I'm just going after it. Getting a new head unit and four speakers. Very simple upgrade, very easy job. This is a customer that lives right down the road. So they just brought it by for me to do a Sony high-powered marine deck. So that's the 100 by four head unit. And we're gonna put in Sony marine speakers. So I should have this thing wrapped up today, no problem. So let's just get to it. As you can see, pretty basic. We've got the harness already soldered, wrapped up in tape here. The harness from the factory does not have a constant. So uh, these high-powered units, you're supposed to run the constant feed to the battery. If you've never used one of their high-powered decks, they're pretty amazing. They basically fit a 100 by 4 amp inside there. Now, is it really 100 by 4? No, not really, but it's enough that you can run it at two ohms. So you can run eight speakers off of this one radio in a boat, which is awesome. Or you can even run subs directly off of this radio. It has a sub direct feature, but I think I heard they're phasing them out. So if you're getting into the new series stuff, I'm pretty sure these may be gone. So if you like this idea, you better snatch them up. Right there, in case you need the model number, it's the DSX M80, that's the Marine. They have the same radio non-Marine, and then they have a, a double DIN that's also the high-powered series. Man, we've hit the end of uh, Tuesday. Everything's done. There's really no footage to show you. When you're working on a boat, if you ever try to show footage of doing the actual install, basically you just get a butt crack shot all day because I spent my whole day on my knees doing those speakers up in the front. Then we had to do these speakers. Now, personally, I hate those speakers down in there. They're just a stupid location for speakers. I've seen them before in boats. If this customer ever wanted to do an upgrade, I would offer to build a plate to come out right here, go down, and have the speakers actually facing out into the cabin because right there, they're just tucked away and the sound is completely lost. I understand it's for the people here in the back seat where I'm sitting, because see, you can see the speakers. So if you're sitting back here, you're gonna get the sound, but in those two seats, they're just non-existent. And here we have the Sony radio, and I can go ahead and uh, play some music. We'll play my soundtrack, of course, because it just makes life easier without having to deal with copyright. And here we go. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice and clean. So now it's time for me to recover this boat and let the customer know that it's finished and go put on a bunch of band-aids because it's been a long time since I've worked on a raw fiberglass boat. This is nothing but raw fiberglass. I have so many fiberglass splinters and blood all over me. I'm gonna go uh, put on some band-aids, verify I don't have any blood anywhere in your boat, and then uh, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. What's up? It is Wednesday in the shop, and today we are not doing anything. We don't have any vehicles we need to do today. The boat was picked up this morning, so it is gone. Today is gonna be one of my fun days where I say I'm gonna organize my shop and then I'll get locked into one little section and I will spend hours and hours on this one little area. And then when I'm all done, it'll look like nothing has changed and I will be annoyed. My shop lately hasn't felt like my shop. So I need to do something about that. And I need to organize all my nuts and bolts and hardware. And I need to pick up my wood shop and I need to organize the chaos behind me. There's a lot to do. Okay, so I've got the, these are the two glass desks that we just had at the shop or at my house, just sitting upstairs. I've got them set up over here in this corner. So this will be where I can do my laptop and I'll have the chair there like it is. I need to get an office chair like with wheels. I don't know why I have that chair. Over here, I don't know yet. I'll probably put my catalogs and paperwork, but that's what happens is it always turns into a mess. And that's why I'm trying to separate it. So that will be over here. 
You notice in all my videos too, you hear my phone blowing up. My phone has been blowing up. I have so many customers trying to get with me. Now, this is actually a motorized table. And the whole point of this table was to be able to use it for soldering and electronics because it sucks to be hunched over. So now it's up here chest level and I can do all my soldering. I can do my inserts in the 3D printed parts. I don't know why this is sitting here. Got my, my new air assist blower there, which is awesome. Uh, got the electronic stuff set up here on the wall. So all my resistors, my diodes, uh, my capacitors, uh, just everything, breadboards, uh, the jump cables, wrap tool. So this is kind of my super nerdy area, Raspberry PIs, Arduino parts. And this is what this desk was always intended for, was to be able to sit here and bust out all my soldering and just do nerdy stuff with magnified glasses. Okay, so this is just turning into a long, tedious process. Been over here, just getting all my nuts and bolts, getting them labeled, putting them in containers. I have all of these containers I've purchased throughout the last year. These are all brand new that I've just never have used. So I think it's time to finally get them used where I get all these little assortment packs and all these nuts and bolts and put them in their own bins and label them. Unfortunately, it takes forever. I wish one of my children would like doing this. I have so many other things I'd be doing. Anyway, this is probably what I'm gonna end up doing the rest of the night. So see how it goes. All right, I think it's about eight o'clock. I think I'm gonna call it a day. I think that's gonna be it. Plus I'm um, really cold. I think I uh, caught something in Nashville. As soon as the sun went down, I could have sworn it's about 40 degrees in here and it's 60. Didn't head home, but I'll show you what I got done. I don't know if you can tell the difference because I guess I never really show off the whole shop, but I still need to do this area here. I'm gonna have to do something with, get it nice and organized. All my grips and my, my magnifiers and everything are up there. My motorized desk. So now it's nice and high and I can work on it at chest level. Now I have to strain myself or kill myself to do any work. And we got all the camera gear. I have a lot. I have a shit ton of camera gear. You would think I'd have amazing videos, but I don't have the time. This is set up now. That's where my laptop will be. And this over here is just a, another desk to get cluttered. So this just makes it so that this can be the cluttered area as opposed to my solder station. I'm getting this all cleared up, getting all my bins labeled. So I've got quite a bit of them done and labeled, but dude, I have so much more. I have lots and lots of little nuts and bolts and screws. And if we go over here, it just, it's just the walls and walls of all this stuff I want organized. It's just, a struggle all this stuff over here it's a struggle to try and remember where it all is I'm just getting too old but looks a lot better than it did but i'm gonna go ahead and call it a day tomorrow is another day of organizing and that's it take it easy this is the end of a uh, wednesday all right we are back in the shop on thursday <clears throat> and we're right back to what i was doing yesterday i know the payoff will be nice like i mean it's starting to look pretty nice in here i mean do you see do you know how boring and tedious it is to try and organize if i don't do it it'll never get done and i've been wanting it done forever it's just so much nicer to be able to just grab what i need that's all i'm doing today is going to keep on organizing i need to pick up my wood shop it's a mess because i went to nashville went to titan motoring they had a dust collector in their wood shop press the hell out of me i mean i was using their router and there was no dust and it's the harbor freight dust collector which i've never bought because i figured it was just not worth it Dude, they got it on sale for like 200 bucks. So I need to go buy one of those. And I need to get in the other shop here and kind of move things around. The Volkswagen bus just sitting there is basically turned into a yard ornament at this point. Get motivated to drink a lot of energy drinks and pull a couple all-nighters, get this thing going. It's, it's really, it's embarrassing that it's still sitting here. Uh, I need to get a new battery for it. The battery's no good. And then we have my Ninja over there in the corner 
which uh, I had a guy supposedly who knew what he was doing because it's carbureted, clean my carburetors. Well, the big plastic thing strapped on the back over there, that's my carburetors because the guy uh, apparently went to jail and now my bike was left in pieces and I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to fix it. So if anybody out there works on the old, it's a like 93 ZX9R, I won't ever ride it. It's just all I had while I was in California, but I was really thinking about doing a cool custom setup on it. If anybody knows how to work on those to put my carburetors back in, that'd be great. Give it a little tune, let me know. I'd really be interested in having that done. I'm gonna get to work and uh, I'll give you an update here later. And I know my videos are boring as hell because I'm literally showing you nothing. <laughs> Show you what I got done. Everything's nice and orderly. I did add all the lighting to this section, all the LED lighting and all that because I'm normally having to solder it. So it made sense to bring all the fiber optic lighting and all my LEDs and everything has to do with circuitry in here. Redid in here, put that slat wall right there, relocated all my um, uh, sound deadening and grills and things. Put my product walls here. This is where I put all the products for upcoming jobs and customers' cars. And I moved the motorcycles over into that corner because they were just annoying me where they were at. So I'm gonna go get the keys from this customer and then I will be done. See you tomorrow. Friday in the shop and today has just started off as a pretty much a, a downer. So I'm supposed to be doing a remote start on this 2018 Ford Taurus. I'll be the first one to tell you, I am not a remote start or an alarm guru by any means. It's actually one of the most hated things that I do. The other issue is I don't have a good memory, so I don't remember what cars need, what some cars don't need. Now this car in particular, I thought I was fine with. I went to flash the module, it said I needed two keys. It's an 80-bit encryption, and it requires two master keys to actually program the remote start, which the customer does not have. So this car cannot be done today. Leads me to the other job sitting out here, which is this big Supra boat that I did a full install on, and it's actually a pretty badass install, uh, but the customer say the tower speakers won't stay on for only they only stay for like a few minutes and that the amps are extremely hot just looked at the install and everything looks fine so now i'm gonna go get my load tester for the batteries and my meter and see if we can find if maybe they've got a bad battery or what's going on here okay and here is the install in the boat uh, so as you can see this is how i like to do my installs and cars boats everything i can everything is visual like i don't have to pull apart anything in this boat to see the amplifiers i have the amps labeled as sub amp interior amp tower amp i can see all the fusing i can follow all the wiring make sure i don't have any issues i can take it to the relays i don't visually see anything wrong what i'll do first is i'm going to load test the batteries that's battery one which i have the system on that's battery two if the batteries test out fine then I'll move on to do an impedance test on all the speakers, make sure we don't have a speaker that's shortened or doing something stupid. And at that point, if everything tests out, then I'll go ahead and turn it on and play it and listen to it. The tower speakers aren't working correctly because they are blown. So I have these pulled out. I'm reading point or 6.7 ohms, 6.7 ohms. So this one went to that pair. This one is reading 0.6 ohms. This one is reading 1.3 ohm. So now with the boat figured out and done and the remote start not being able to be done this morning, he's pulled out. It's about two in the afternoon and I need to re-gear to do something else. So what's on the priority list? Probably my son's sub enclosure in the wood shop. Uh, it's just been too long. I should have had his car done a long time ago. I just never have time to really get on it. Just had to do another little skim coat. Came out really rough because uh, my body filler. I have to order some more cans. It's I must have not got it completely sealed. It had gotten really dry. If I was wrapping it in carpet, it was good to go already. And I may do carpet, but I want options. So I wanted to just go ahead and get it smooth enough so I could wrap it in leather in case I want to. I didn't want to be limited to carpet because it was so rough. So this is my son's Honda Civic. He did the custom speaker pods, did the door pods. He's got the audio control six and a half there. Then the audio control three inch right there. And then the tweeters will go up here, which is what I was doing today. Um, custom speaker pods made the pods for me and it fit over on the passenger side perfect. But he didn't 
know about this because when he designed them he just had the a pillars this hump right here so the pod won't actually fit it's actually working on a fix right now so he's got to move the tweeter up higher so it comes out around here because that dash just isn't going to allow that to happen but he's got a kenwood radio and i'll show you the cool thing that everybody loves that i did in his car is his lighting so that's what everybody seems to dig the lighting I did in here. The lighting goes throughout the dash, all the way through his doors, and it goes all the way out the back doors, completely throughout the whole car, across the top. And it's surprisingly bright. I mean, it's daylight in here. Do, 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 do. It's like a spaceship in here. It's actually a horrible idea for me to do for my kid. It's very distracting and the pretty lights and you can make them change you can make them do anything you want so this f-150 is a customer of mine i've done multiple cars for him this is kind of like his play truck kind of thing um it kind of became like his project truck that he just wants to add stuff to and he already had me do a head unit so we did a jvc double den then he wanted the audio control in dash equalizer then he had power base three ways so i squeezed that bastard up there which looks like i need to do some more pretty work here on the side of it not like the way it's holding up so squeeze that big bastard there got the tweeter there and the woofer is there this entire rear end he removed the back seats and he just wants me to kind of go wild he wants to have a big wall set up here or i cannot go past this so i've got to stay straight across and behind that which is going to be kind of rough and also everything has to be protected because he wants to make this a flat floor here so he can throw stuff back there and not worry about you know damaging the system since he already had power base in the front end we went ahead and went with Four eight inch power base subs are gonna be going across the bottom. He currently has the power base 4124 channel. So got another one of those and a power base 1000 that'll be going to the four eights. There's another set of three ways. He wants the three ways in the back as well. Again, I'm against it, but it's what he wants. So in his mind, he had it where there was four subs across the bottom three amps across the middle, and then on the top on each corner, having three-way component set, and then he wants some kind of a storage compartment in the middle. So that is what I'm gonna do tomorrow, which means I'm done for today. So Friday is dead. Saturday morning and we're back at it. Today is design this F-150, come up with a game plan, then head to Lafayette, probably later this afternoon to buy any materials I think I'll need. But we're gonna go ahead, pull out the carpet, pull everything out of this vehicle so I can get an idea of the shape, what it looks like, get an idea of size, how much room I have, and then, uh, start sketching and drawing and um, nothing really gets done except up in here which is all that really matters right so. all right so i think i got a pretty good idea of what this thing is going to look like got all the measurements got everything laid out got all of our specs for the subs the speakers now one of the biggest things with this build is my restrictions so he wants it to all stay behind the plastic there that corner so i put the tape across there so I can have a straight line. So I can see up here, comes in, and out, and out. What we're gonna end up doing is four eight inch subs across the bottom sealed. Uh, to go ported requires too much airspace. I know that's kind of crazy, but to stay within these, these area, I would have to take it up so high we run out of room, but I can get perfect the sealed specs. So we're gonna do four eights sealed. The top of the box will go right to the bottom of where that module is. That's about how high it'll go. And it will come out to this tape. Once you get up to that height of that module, we're gonna go angled. We're gonna angle back in for the amp rack. And we'll have the three amplifiers across the amp rack. 
and then up top is where the three-way components are gonna be. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna go across wise, which is kind of what I was thinking about doing. And because this is kind of an old school setup, I was even thinking about doing the old school teardrop. But in the center, he wants to have a hinged like door, like a storage compartment. And he also told me he wants some kind of like logos and stuff. So that'll probably end up going on the front of the storage compartment, that door area. We need to be able to do all of this with wood paneling and upholstery. And that's gonna be the trick. It's also gonna be what makes this thing look like an 80s install. Of course, I'm gonna do some things to make it not look like that, but that's kind of what the customer's going for. So all we gotta do now is go get the materials. So I think this is probably it. This is the end of the video. It's Saturday. This is the last day for this week. So if you want to see how this turns out, you've got to subscribe and it'll be in next week's video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.